Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. I'm Cody with Up to Code. And I'm Camille. Today we're going to shoot video six of 10. We're going to start getting into coating. So we're going to coat our butt joints today. Okay. So let's start. Before we start coating, I want to just run over the beads because on the last video, video five, we installed the beads, but we now that they're dry, let's just review it really quickly. Um, I guess we'll start over here at the tearaway. You can see it's actually shrunk back quite a bit and that's what we need because it's taping mud. We don't want it exposed or proud. So it's shrunk back really well, but it's uh, embedded nicely. We'll just have to chew off some of this. We'll just clean that up before we start coating, but that's another day. This no coat on the inside angle, I was really happy with. It, like I told you before, it goes on like a tape, but it's strong like a bead. That I'm really happy with. Not so happy with my experimental no coat on the outside corner, and that's the first time I've ever done it. Uh, it's sitting a little more proud than I thought. If you look here, it's sitting more like a 90 degree bead wood, where if I want to have over bent that, it would have sat a little flatter. But I wanna show you two different types of beads. You wanna hold the trowel? You might as well get used to running the trowel. Cause oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's two types of beads. This is the one that I've used in the past. If you look carefully, I can't remember the name of this one. It's got a rope right down the center. And what's nice about it is it's flexible, but it, it doesn't hold a lot of tension. So if I bend it like this, it doesn't want to stay like that. It, it, it'll go and adjust with my wall. So if I would have used this one here, my mud would have just sucked it in nicely. And I think it would have been just a lot tighter, which therefore is less mud and less shrinkage when we start to coat. But for now, we're just going to keep this bead as is, and it'll actually come in handy when we start coating, and I'll show you that as we get there. Here's a PVC bead for an offset. I don't particularly like the PVC. This one has really no flexibility, so you can't adjust if that corner is in a perfect 45. Plus, it's the same as that tearaway when we had to contact cement it. And it's just tricky, so all of a sudden you got to contact cement this, contact cement the wall, and if it doesn't stick perfectly, it's just a gong show. You got to rip it off. Anyway, I wouldn't use this. This one I've used in the past and I should have just stuck with my instinct and just went with that. That's okay. All you guys that are experienced tapers and mutters out there, if you're watching this, you can, you can bring on the flack, bring it on. Mm -hmm. I'm used to it. Might as well just show you these outside corners as well. They're pretty standard, but I just want to illustrate that Camille did a really good job they have the proper amount of set. So each side is pretty much shows the exact same amount of daylight. And that's, yeah, pretty much perfect uh, installation on those. So let's get into coating. Okay, now we gotta mix up some mud. So, yep. Pretty sure Camille will do a better job than I did on the taping mud box. Maybe, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got cut. <laughs> <laughs> if you dump it, I'll mix it. It's tricky stuff, but oh. yes. Nope. Ah, I'm getting it half out of the bucket. There you go. That's, that's okay. That's part of learning because it's just that little, those little subtleties that make the difference. Yeah, so just pull the box right out. Just pull it right off, let the plastic do its thing. Okay, flip it over, fold those in. Yeah, I didn't really give you any direction, so. So. Some people make it look so easy, right? You, well, yeah, you did. Perfect. Okay, that's why we have this pail of water and a sponge. Your squishy? My squishy. <laughs> so are you doing two squishes into here as well? Good question on the amount of squishes. Because we're doing first coat, 
We want the mud fairly thick, fluid enough that it's easy to work with, but with it being thicker, it will have less water, therefore it'll shrink less. Okay. Because that first coat, we want to fill it up and get the, a nice shape so that the second coat can be done with just the second coat and we're trying to avoid a third coat, more steps, more time. Okay. Yeah, so just do two squishes and I'll do the spinning. You don't want two full squishes, do you? Yeah. And with the mud being a little thicker today, it should Yeah, perfect. You know, with the mud being a little thicker, it should be a little easier for you to learn the hawk and trowel. Because if it's too runny, it is a real bugger because it just keeps falling off the hawk and falling off your trowel. Do you think I can do this flawlessly again? <laughs> no, no, I don't. The first video I botched it, right? You just don't want me to do it because you know I'll do it better than you, like most things. Right. Like yeah, yeah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll look like the amateur. Amateur hour. Can you hold the bucket? Just sploosh it all over the place. Good thing we did the two squishes at first. I was like, oh, that's way too much. Mm -hmm. Please. You can put the squish in there now and soak up some of the water. There we go. It's like a milkshake, man. Let's check consistency. I think that's good. Better have a little thicker on the first coat, like I said. So order of taping. So just this video today, we're gonna do butt joints. Okay. Then that's gonna take a while to dry. Then we'll do the flats. Because then when this flat comes through, it'll fill up this bevel. That'll dry. Then we can do our beads. So when the beads come through, it doesn't fall into the bevel. Okay. And then angles are always last. There's a little bit of a we have to do the three-way corners of the, the angles because you only do one coat of mud on all your angles. So you'll have to do one side a few days before you do your final coat. Okay. So that part we'll get to when those videos arrive. Now I'll show you what I do to get prepped and do this. I'll do the first butt joint. Okay. First thing I'll do is I'm just going to scratch off any high spots. <laughs> I'm not going to sand it because sometimes what I find is when you're sanding stuff like this, then you get a dust, a layer of dust everywhere and then your mud doesn't stick very well and you got to work it twice as hard to get it stick to the wall. Okay. So whether you want to scratch the whole job site at once or just do it per butt joint, however you want to do it, just do it that way. Okay. Then you load up the old hawk. And I'm not the best with the hawk control either, so. Okay. Yeah. I'm not an ultra pro. Really loading that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm a little bit good. So if you want to, before, depends, if you're at home, you can play with a little bit of mud and get the feel for it, which we're going to have a little learning curve today. Okay. However, I'm going to do this one. We'll just run through, now a butt joint, it actually, because the tape's sitting on the surface, you can hear it, it's rocking, right? Okay. So there, it's high up here, we have to flare it out wide so that it's as flat as possible. If you do a narrow little joint like this, it's more round. The wider you go, the flatter it is. Okay. So 
So first thing all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my width and I'm going to get the mud on. Same thing as taping, relatively the same consistency, a little thicker, and then I start wiping it and getting it flat. You can see my mud's starting to already flatten out. It's going to fall off my hawk here soon. First thing I'm going to do is I'm, I want to wipe like this. So I'm going to load the top side of my trowel. Now that because the mud's fairly thick, it didn't fall off, right? I can hold it. So I'm just going to get the mud right down the center and I'm just going to push it on. I'll load up a little bit more. I'm going to stop in here somewhere. Then I'm going to go a little bit wider. So I'm going to go 50% of the first one. And I like to just wiggle it up at the top just to get it into the inside angle. Now, if it's getting too wide, you can just Okay. I'll load up this side. You pretty much use a whole hawk full of mud. All right, my mud is on there. It's super thick. What I want at the end of the day is the thinnest layer of mud over top of my tape. I want to just, as this is drying, I just want to be able to see the tape through the mud but it still has to have a nice little cover. If it's too thick, then again, it's just a big hump in the wall. <clears throat> so if you're inexperienced, it's better to do three thin coats than try to go heavy and sand it off later. Just err on the side of caution. It's way easier to do an extra coat than to sand it. Now I have some air pockets and stuff in there, but that's okay. I'm gonna go right down the middle and I wanna try to get that consistency down the tape take a little mud off now I got to be careful if I'm if I'm starting at the top with an empty trowel I'm going to dig more out of the top so I'm just going to get a little bit of mud on my trowel I can always leave take that little bit there too down the middle make sure I have mud on the trowel squish it in and then I'm going to hold the trowel fairly flat flat to the wall and I'm just going to put even pressure down. That's still pretty heavy. I'm going to do that again. See how much I took off. Now I think I'm pretty good. I, I believe I can see that tape a little bit. Then what I'll do I like to go a little bit wider, folks. I'm going to put all the weight on the left side. I want to just get this butt joint a little wider. In previous videos, people give me grief. They say it's way too wide. I don't care. Wider splatter. Now that it's applied, I'm going to cut this left edge off. So I'm literally going to just put all my weight on the left and cut this mud down to zero. So I'm just literally like that because I want it to blend to nothing. Same thing on the left, all the weight on the left. On the right. On the right. <laughs> Good call, Camille. So now it's pretty hefty right in here. I'm going to go just flat and nice and even. Same thing here. Now I can see a ridge. I've built it back up in the middle. I'm going to just go nice and flat down the middle. No weight at the top because it's already getting thin at the top. A little more weight as I come down. I don't want to take off any more than that. <clears throat> I'm going to do one more left and right. This time I'm going to put a little more pressure on the left side because I don't want to dig out the work to the right. Now here I'll put all my, not all of it, but more weight on the right side. I'm 
still cutting it down to zero. Then here, I'm gonna just cut this off. It's blended through pretty nice, but I wanna make sure I don't have a ridge through my flat. So I'm literally gonna just put all the weight on the bottom of the trowel, clean that off. Gonna go over it one more time. I'm gonna cut the left off. So all my weight just on the left, cut the mud right to zero. Do it on the right. Then I'm gonna go just straight, flat, nice even pressure. Nice even pressure. And then I always like to do one down the middle to try to get the middle nice and flat and wide. If you guys look carefully, and we'll review this in a few minutes as it dries, you'll see it better. You can just barely see the tape down the center. So I've got a little bit of mud coverage. I know I'm not too thin. I know I'm not too thick. You can see this ridge of mud right here. That's okay. And same with this ridge right there. Because next time what we'll do is when this is dry, we'll give it a real light sand. We'll go flat down the middle again, and then we'll, we'll taper and go a little bit wider, and it'll just taper off to zero. And it'll just be a nice flat butt joint. Yeah, so scratch that off. Just one thing to be aware of, don't snag the tapes. Like don't come up at the tapes like this. Just start in the middle, scrape that way or scrape that way. Okay. So you don't want to peel your tapes off. Now you gotta go, yeah, go wide because your mud, you're gonna be a mud note to there. I'm gonna take this out. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of in the way here. I just, there's a little bit of a ridge here. Just remember those tapes are just a little bit apart. Just get rid of that ridge. Okay. Even though we have those extra tapes on, it's still the same butt joint. Okay. And it might tweak it a little bit, but I'll coach you as we go. Okay. So if I was you, I would start at the bottom and just work your way to the top. Okay. And we'll just do a little bit of mud for now, just because it might start falling off the hawk. Once you get the hang of it, we can always just load more mud as we go. Okay. So however you want to get a grip on that, so. Okay. I'll try work? not to go crazy, yep. Yeah. Try not to go crazy. It's gonna be tricky, yep. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to look pretty, just get her on the wall. So one, one difference. Put all my waves. Whoop, that's, whoop, yeah, whoop. that's okay. <laughs> I hold it like this. Okay. I don't know. I'm a lefty, so yeah, we're all buggered up. You're a lefty though. Hold I, it can't, like, I can't hold nope. it like that. You can't? No, like Whoa. this way. Yeah, no, I can't do that. Why? Because that's, that just doesn't, it doesn't feel, right. feel right. No, not at all. I have to hold it like this. I think most people, when they start, they hold it like this. But if you can do it, that's great. I can't, I can't do that. That's weird. Oh, let's, that's, let's, let's, that's backwards. Let, let, You're lefty. Know. That's backwards. No, that's that's just how you do it. But okay, okay I'll get you more mud. Keep going. Go on. a little more at the top, and then you can give it one. Yeah, and stop there. Now go right from the bottom to the top, and just try to get it even. Get the waves out of there. Even if it's a bit heavy, that's okay. Is that better? That's better. Yep. Yeah, load up the left. <laughs> load up the right. Of just I've never taught anyone to do a butt joint, so. Can I teach you a trick on that too? Yeah. Okay. I'm already all full of it. That's okay. This was the hardest thing when I started to learn. It's like, how do you, I couldn't get it on yeah, the, the trowel. I don't even know how to explain it really. I think you just, you kind of like 
jab at it. Like you kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> Get it in the middle and lay it flat and then just like hook it. Okay. I don't know. You said the left, you said the right. Well, my lefts and rights are all buggered up today. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you fill it and then you empty it, eh? <laughs> yeah, so just, there you go. That's better. That's okay. better. It's one of those things. You just got to practice. It's hard to describe how to do it. Okay, that's good. I like how you started square to the wall and then rolled it flatter. That's perfect because that's how you get it on. Yep. And then roll flatter, flatter, flatter. Yep. Okay. There you go. That was a good scoop. Now this is Camille's first time, people, so she's actually doing really well. So no well. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Feel free to comment, but just keep your comments to yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> the bad ones anyway. Yeah. I know I'm I know I'm not a pro, so That's okay. We gotta teach the beginners how to do it themselves. That'd be good for any small jobs. Like one bathroom? Yeah, well, if, yeah, if you're two doing a bathroom, two. that's the hardest time to find a tradesman is when you just okay. have a small bathroom to do. I wanted to So we have right a fair bit of mud. Yep, do that, that's cool, I like that. Okay. Okay. Go back up the middle, try to get it a little flatter. And some, at the bottom, Camille, start mm -hmm. a little more square and get it if you start a little more square, it'll wipe because you got a fair bit of excess there. Oh boy. This Starting, is all this droopy stuff on the floor, you mean? <laughs> just leave it on the floor, but okay. yeah, just hook it in tight. Right up the middle. Okay. That's good. You see all the hollow spots? Yeah. Normally that means those are low spots, but right in this scenario you actually got to wipe it a little harder a little tighter and it'll flatten those right out yep because like i said you don't want it too thick you want to be able to kind of see that tape a little bit oh yeah so that's a good example you wiped it too tight there that would be perfect if we are finishing Okay. Everything else is too thick. So next time, go one more up the middle, carry it, but then right as you get there, flatten it right out and okay. whatever mud you're pulling off there, apply it right there. That's okay. Oh, I waved it. Okay. That's okay. Leave that. Okay. Let's load up. So load up the whole trowel. Don't load up the left or the right. I want to go wider, obviously. Okay. So if you have just a little pile of mud in the middle, it's hard to get proper placement. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of smear the mud around on my trowel. I'll just get it so it's wider. So when I scoop it, it's a little wider. Okay. So you want to take, is that, I don't even know if that's the proper placement. So now I want to go, because we have, we're here, I want to go at least 50%. So I want the mud this wide. Just a so pro you, master of the masters. <laughs> you're going to do that on the left. Okay. So you're going to go from about here to there. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Straight up. Yes. But I don't have any on my left. You don't have any on the left. So now this is perfect example. Okay. Scoop this little chunk right here on this part of the trowel on the left part. So just scoop. Yeah. More? That's okay. Yeah, it's a little bit too much on the very edge. Now it's going to 
blubber over on the outside, <laughs> but that's better. Try that. Okay. This is good. It's, I know it's a little slow, but it's, it's worth learning this way. It is. And I'm like a helicopter parent just standing over top. Just, uh, Waiting. Yeah. Wait, Look, see, on? now I have no, I don't have even, this is a job for the pros, people. The pros. There you go. That's a good one. And go up from here. Yeah, right from there. Yep. Nope. Okay. There, I got some hollow spots. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, no, you're going to keep going. I'm just going to wipe this. You're going a little wonky. Okay. If Even if you have to, just do some of that. Okay. Start at the bottom and just wipe some of it off. And then, yeah, you should have left a little bit at the top. Oh. That's okay. We can fill that when we do the bevel. Okay. Or the flat. Okay. And then go one more on the left. Um, now, because we have pretty good placement, you see how it's a bit thin here? Yeah. Go one more time, and once you hit there, start wiping harder. Okay. Try to keep more pressure on the left. Nice. Okay. I would do a nice, do a nice little light one up the middle. Keep it nice and even and yeah and flat. Do one more because we can see those hollow spots. That means we need to go a little bit harder on the pushing. Got a hitchhiker. Classic. That's awesome. Oh, look at that. Nice. What's that line from? That's a hitchhiker. That's a chunk of mud or dirt. Or oh, something. awesome. Mm -hmm. So now you got the mud applied. Okay. Now we start cutting those edges. See how I'm not even touching with the rest? I'm only going to be touching with like the first three or four inches. And all my weight is on that right side. And I'm just going to cut that off. Do you want me to cut it or? Yep. Yeah? You cut it. I'll cut the top, you're cutting the left. Okay. Okay? So like this, Camille. All my weight is going to be at the top when I cut the top. Okay. And I don't want to wipe anything else off. So just like the, the first three or four inches. So we don't want a ridge at the top because it's going to be really hard to mud out. Okay. So yeah, you're going to do the left and just... All my weight on the left. All your weight on the left. Um, you gotta basically move it over right. The very, the very front edge is right here. Move it over this way. Yeah, straight up from there. And only on the left side? Only on the left. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can do that. That was nope. pretty good. You can lay it a little flatter into the wall. Not so much on the left. And start right at the bottom again. Oh, goodness. You're basically just avoiding digging out your work on the right hand side of the trowel. Okay. Ooh, that was better. Better. That was good. Okay. One more. No. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna. Now we're gonna make the finishing touches on this bad boy. Okay. We're gonna make it nice and flat. It's gonna look just like mine. Okay. <laughs> So now, on the left side, a little bit more pressure on the left, not a whole bunch, and just wipe straight up. Just a little bit of pressure on the left. And you want to just kind of want that right side just floating and just going right nicely on the surface on the right side of your trowel. Perfect. Okay, do it one more time. A little less pressure on the left. Just try to go a little more flat. Just go even straight up and down. Okay. It's not bad. That is not bad at all. Do the left. Float it. The right. Go up the right. Go 
Yeah, just go straight up and down. See how much mud you took off there? That's good. It's and one right up the middle, Camille. Go right up the middle, nice and flat. Perfect. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay. So now you have a ridge here and here. So it's a high spot and a high spot. You're going to go dead center with your trowel, flat, and just flatten that right out. So. Before I lose all of this. Dead center here? Uh, nope. Here? Dead center of those ridges. Because you basically that's a high point. So just flatten that out. So yeah, just go. Flat, straight up and down, center of your trowel. Yes, perfect. Oh my goodness. Here, I'll clean empty. your hawk for you. I'll dump a little mud. So now that right hand ridge goes straight up the middle of that. Okay. This is good. This is really good. Okay, here, I'll give you your hawk back. And then one see, right here. Yeah, this is another ridge. So what it's telling me is it's still high. Okay. We've still got a high spot there. Okay. This one is actually, we could leave that one on the right. So we want to go one dead center up those ridges. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> now. Now. <laughs> here's the time, point in time, people, where you could leave it like this and give it a little bit of a grind. A little more sand. I know it's safe to coat over a second time. You have a nice shape and it's full. But we're going to try one more time. We're going to not totally cut the left, but we're going to try to get that a little flatter. Let's go over it one more time. And this is the point where sometimes you bugger it up and you go too far and you make a mess. So all the pressure on the left. Did I bugger it up? No, you were maybe a little too far to the left, but that's okay. Okay. Because you kind of want the edge of your trowel right there. Okay. And you were more like there. So you're not cutting it off as much, but that's okay. Um, go up the middle. Let's just see what that does. Go one up the middle. Yes. You got a ridge left and right. Go dead center of the left ridge. Not left bridge. Oh, I just dipped my hair in this mud. Oh no. That's okay. You could do that left. Do you want me to do this? Do one? the left again just because you, you kind of stop there for a sec. On here? Yeah, just go really light on the left. Perfect. And then go dead center of this right hand ridge. Look at me ridging this place up. You're ridging it. And one dead center of your whole butt joint, and then we're done. Nice. There's not a lot I would change. Okay. There was a moment where I was like, oh, I don't know if she's going to get it done. <laughs> and I think, did you notice you switched your hand position to this? No, just on that one thing. On the last one? Oh, okay. Yeah, because my yeah. wrist hurts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I noticed, I was like, yeah, she switched her hand to mine. Okay. This is really good. I can tell it's flat. You can see those couple ridges, but when we give it that rough sand before our second so coat, those will flatten out. And then the second coat now, well, I guess this has a really nice shape. The second coat will fill any low spots and basically just even it all out. And what does this stuff shrink like the other mud It'll does? It'll shrink a little bit, but because okay. we mixed it thicker, it won't shrink as bad. Okay. Because we want it nice and full, which it is. Okay. Okay. Perfect.
Good job. So sometimes what happens is when you're boarding, whether you're inexperienced or you got a little miniature set like we do today, this butt joint ends up too close to a corner bead and you could get away with doing this independently of the butt joint. But I just know from past experience, especially baseboarding, you're gonna create, you have a high spot here, it's going down to nothing, and then it has a slight hump in the wall where the butt joint is. Now, I don't wanna see that, I wanna go nice and flat. I'm gonna build up this middle so it's basically straight across, and then I'm gonna taper down to drywall over to the right. Then, this is basically bonus feature, I'm gonna incorporate the corner bead and everything all at once. It's basically super butt joint, into a corner bead, both sides of the angle, and yeah, gonna watch me play around with some mud for a few minutes. Okay, I know the, the corner bead part really isn't the specifics of this video, but we gotta do it anyway, because we're here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up from here up, I'm gonna work up high, and then I'm gonna do the bottom section and just blend into the top. I'm just loading it on for now. Notice it was just about to fall out and I just kept going down and taking my trowel flat. Okay, you make that look easy. <laughs> okay. Just gonna go lightly. I want this to be a little bit heavy on this bead so that as I fine tune it all, I could take off a little bit more mud. Gotta get on my tippies. I'm gonna cut this left edge off. So all the weight's on the left hand side of my trowel. Cut that off, see how much mud's left? Then I'm just gonna go real light. So that side's good until I get to the end. Then I'm gonna treat the butt joint like a butt joint. Up the center. Get it flat. And this trick that I'm teaching you right now is actually really good if you're doing renovations. This is where I learned this trick is just having oddball situations happen where I need to make something flat. I'm gonna go super wide. So I'm just gonna go overlap my old butt about two inches. I'm gonna go straight up and just, just applying the mud, getting it on there. Making sure that I have more than enough. You can see the right hand side's way too heavy. I'm just gonna put a 
fair bit of pressure, not all of it on the right side. I'm not totally cutting that edge, but just tapering the mud a bit. Okay, this is the hard part. I want to load up heavy in the middle. I don't want to dig any of my work out. So I'm just going to, sometimes I'll just go like this and try not to dig out any mud. Because if I do that, I just have to reapply it everywhere else. See, I'm a little too wide. If I just load it in the middle. Okay, she's heavy. Now comes the hard part. I'm going to wipe this, try to get flat with the other, the left and the right side. Hmm. Okay. You can still see how heavy this section is because I can see a nice heavy ridge there and a heavy ridge there. The top I got to be gentle on because I'm getting a little thin. No pressure at the top. More pressure as I work my way down. And the hardest part is not digging out your work. Now I'm going to clean up this left hand side of this bead. When I'm doing beads, I like to hold my trowel nice and square. Because if, if I hold it flat like this and I push really hard, I'm just going to bow my trowel and I'm just going to create a, a bow on the wall. So if I hold it nice and square, it's actually going to hold it more true and straight. And that's why it's nice to have this left side cut off. I don't have to worry about cutting it flush with the drywall. I can just hold my trowel square. be hard. Batman. I'm going to blend one more time up. That's it. I don't want to remove too much mud on the first coat. I want it nice and full because it's going to shrink back anyway. And I want to get away with two coats on these beads and the giant butt joint. So now I have to float this side a little bit. I, I don't want to dig out the work. I need to put a little pressure on the left hand side where it's touching the corner bead and basically let the right hand side of my trowel float. Now I can finish up this butt joint. I'm going to go down the center of my tape because I want to make sure I have just enough coverage over my tape. I'm going to cut this left side now officially. Ah, I keep thinking because I keep flipping my trowel around. I'm going to cut the right hand side now officially. That's good. I'm going to leave that. Now I'm going to wipe just nice and flat down this chunk. A little more pressure on the right as to not dig out the work on the left. Now the hardest part, actually make sure your trowel is nice and clean for this. Because if you start getting hitchhikers now, you're going to be not so happy. Okay, perfect. Almost done. Hmm. Tricky. 
no weight at the top, a little more weight as I move myself down. Basically right now I'm just judging whether I do one more wipe and I think I will. I don't want too much mud on here. I'm going to cut this right hand side a little bit. Remember, I'm just floating on the right hand side, pressure on the bead on the left. Okay, over the butt joint one more time, up the middle, over the middle of my tape or the center of my tape, widen that out. Doesn't help that I'm a shorty. Going to do this right hand side, more pressure on the right, let the left hand side just float, not to dig the workout. Down here, nice and flat, even pressure, flatten it right out. And one more down the center of my tape, just to flatten out that butt joint. And I'm going to do this one one more time. Oh boy. I'll finish up this bottom here in a sec. But what I want to point out is you can tell that I'm not too shallow. I have just enough mud on because I'm still creating ridges. If you start seeing hollow spots, or if you dig your workout, you just have to keep reapplying. So I know I'm nice and proud, but I still feel like we're flat. So that's good. We can knock those ridges off a little bit. And once we do the second coat, it should be good to go. Now I just gotta blend this in. Just gonna go light on the left. Light on the right. Gonna cut these edges off. Cut that. That's cut. That was a nice blend. Not bad. Okay. So that's how you do it, folks. Butt joint's too close to an outside corner. Make your wall nice and flat. Do a super butt joint. And that's how it's done. Coat almost had a snap show. Just to note, I didn't forget the butt joint above us, and that's important to the steps and procedures. 
because then that'll be nice and dry and when we go to coat the beads you won't ride over top of that butt joint and create like a wave anyway let's do first coat on these screws okay so you just need a little tiny bit of mud on the corner just a little bit because you're gonna probably have to do this three times so i like to just put it in one way wipe it another put it one way wipe it the other so if you keep them small when you do three coats it doesn't end up just being a big blob and it's just more sanding to do later so let's do that again again just apply it one way wipe it off nice and square okay i'll finish this ceiling off big ceiling today folks <laughs> I'll get out of your way. You can do it. I can do it. Do it. You always make these look so easy. That's the French way of doing it. Just do it backwards of what code says. You don't have to necessarily put it on with the, you still want to put it, apply it when it's flat. Can I show you? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just. Is this giving you a, a headache? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I did it's three. Worse than the... I did three. I've got one left, and now you want to show me a trick. <laughs> it's worse than the butt joint. Is it? No, I'm just fucking. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to dig it in with the corner. Just use. Still apply it flat. Wipe it flat. Apply it flat. And just. So you apply it one direction, wipe it the other. Okay. And you want to wipe it fairly tight because sometimes it'll bubble outward. And they're, they're going to shrink back, so you need to do it three times. Do a couple more for us. Perfect. So, yeah, a couple there. You want to get these little nail holes? Do them. Yeah, and as long as those aren't, the paper isn't folded out, then you can do those. If the paper's sticking outward, you just gotta press it in with the corner of your knife and then keep going. Okay. Yeah, finish away. Perfect. Yes. Butt joints are all done. Let's just look at them real quick. Okay. Um, this one, you can see the tape. It's drying out just over top of the tape. So that means I just have a nice thin layer of mud over top of that. So I didn't build it out too much. And then yours looks really good. I can tell that it's flat. It's maybe a hair thicker, but I think it's going to be okay. I can still tell it's got the nice shape and we'll be able to tell when that dries. Perfect. Okay. How did you, what did you think of the Hawk and Trowel? It's tricky. It is. It's super tricky. Yeah. And it's, that's with mudding and taping is basically all those little techniques. And that's what we're trying to teach the people at home is, Okay, this is what it's like when you start, but you it with a little guidance you can get yeah, quite a bit it, better. It flows better once you start going, but yeah, yeah, it didn't take you long. No. And next time you'll be even better. So with that, perfect. Thanks. Thank you. See ya.